Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my studio. Today is part four of our watercolor project, uh, Guardian of the Path. This is just an old fence I found on the Palos Verdes Peninsula going down to the, uh, the shoreline there. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can go to my blog spot and you'll find a link that takes you to my uh, reference photo and a, a design for this. So you can download them and follow along or just watch and and hopefully you'll learn something. I've been teaching for about 15 years now and I do try to do these like I would if I were in class, although you get the benefit of seeing it up close. Uh, what I want to point out from our, our last one uh, is that I, I have gone and finished this. You know, I've, I've put in some of the, the water and kind of softened edges, put in the dark. I went back and, and splattered with some more gray and some brown. I found that it was easier for me to stand up and do that and just make sure I didn't have too much water on my my toothbrush and I was able to get some texture in there. And I don't want to be too focused on this because this is in the distance. But I do want to show you something that you can do if you want just to kind of finish that up. And this is just kind of straight burnt sienna. And there are some rocks that, that kind of show up right, right along the, the, the edge and you can just just tap them in. Don't make them all. Don't line them up like a herd of turtles, but just come in and just kind of tap. Make some of them bigger, some of them smaller. Right, right along that that water's edge because that water is is coming up through through those rocks. Okay, so that that's all all I wanted to show you there, and you can you know soften them or, or remove them but you, you know I don't want to get too detailed back in here because that's distant that's not that's not my my show back here this is my show up here so now what I want to do is work on this middle ground before I get to this fence and that middle ground like I said I've got my reference material right where I can see it so this, this middle ground, I've got some shadows that I need to put in, maybe a little bit of detail, and, and maybe a little extra color, and then I'll move on to the, the fence. Bring my palette over here so you can see it. What I'm going to do is mix a shadowy color. Now I know I've already done this, but watercolor tends to dry a little lighter, and so... You sometimes have to go over it a couple times. That's just ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson to make kind of a purpley color. Now I do have, uh, if you look on the blog spot, you'll see uh, in the sidebar that I have an equipment list. And in that equipment list, I list dioxazine purple. I've kind of gotten a little bit away from that because uh, the dioxazine purple stains and people really get carried away when I say use a little bit of purple. Everything ends up looking purple and I don't want that. So now what I'm going to do is up here is that I'm going to, to put in some shadows. Now I'm going to paint around like if I want this to stand out I'm going to kind of paint around. This is called negative painting. Paint around that clump and put in some dark here. There's a kind of a, a light spot right in there. I'm, like I said, I've got that reference material right in front of me. Do that again. Rinse my brush, just kind of come up and soften, soften edges. So it just kind of blends back in there a little bit. Do I have little 
places where it's a little lighter or something, that's okay. It gives a little bit of, of depth. Now I'm going to come back and do a similar thing here. I'm, I'm not going to paint right up to the edge because I want that, that edge to be lighter so you can see it against the one in back. I'll paint around some of the things here. Negative painting. As a watercolorist, negative painting is kind of your 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 life, you know, because you have to save your light colors. Um, it's hard to get those those light areas back once you've got them too dark. I want to make sure I'm not repeating a shape too much. Go in and out. Okay, that's I'm using that same color. I'm going to come here and and put a shadow on my my rocks. Down here there's a shadow on on this rock. Painting around some of this that doesn't have um, masking on. Now remember I still have the mask on this fence and I'll take that off here probably once I get this done. But I'm just coming in, adding these shadows to give a little texture. Maybe put a little bit of shadow right behind this, this rock. You, wherever you can use contrast. Now contrast is the difference between light and dark. So if I want to make this rock look lighter, it's got to be darker around it. So I negative paint. and just make that a little bit darker. Same down here. Just going to come in and negative paint behind it. Create some more shadows in these bushes. Not hurting anything. Again, this is not my subject matter. So I just want to suggest those things. I can again take that same color and come over here and right at the, the base of some of these just mix it again. That's all I'm doing when I'm off camera is mixing again. It's just come in right at the base, throw, throw some, just this is where you start just doing little detaily stuff. This is just weeds and clumps of stuff and rocks and everything. I don't want to get too carried away, but I do want to add some shadows, give a little bit of texture to it. Just rinse my brush a little bit, just kind of soften some of those. Just put some shadows under things create just another level of stuff and and this side kind of goes down the hill so I'm I'm that's why I'm kind of angling my my brush strokes get some color around this you can always touch up at the very end if you need to come down here this is just kind of, move this over here so you can see it. This is just kind of like adding some, this is scumbling, just, you know, I'm just adding stuff, mostly down around the base. There's a, a bush here that I can throw some shadows into. And just a, maybe just a little bit more here. I'm just dropping that in. Now I don't need to do much more. This is picked up too much. This is just 
stuff in the background. These are like the supporting actors of a of a play or or the set design or something. These are not they're not supposed to draw your attention away from the the star of the show, which is my fence. They're just there to support. Okay, well, I'm going to take a little break and let that dry. And when I come back, we're going to start working on this. And I will take off what's left of my masking fluid in the meantime. So you'll see, see why I put that on there. So let me let this dry and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Now uh, this is all dry. I've taken the masking off. Now if you are using like a, a white or a clear masking, and sometimes even that blue masking, you want to make sure it's all off. Just kind of run your, your fingers over it and you can feel where there might be, it's a little tacky. And that's usually where the, the masking fluid is. So then you can just go ahead and take it off. Now that I have it off, I need to kind of clean up some of those areas. But first what I want to do is that I want to put some more shadows on these. So the, our shadow color is going to be the ultramarine blue in a lizard crimson, which is the, the kind of purpley red. And I'm going to add just a tiny touch of, of burnt sienna into it that just kind of grays it a little bit. It's not going to be quite as watery as I usually have it. But I want to I want to do that now so I can kind of clean up edges on the fence and then while it's drying I can go and clean up around the fence if that makes sense. So let's see, I want to make sure I'm in okay, it's right here. Now I've kind of focused in on this. Now I know this looks dark and you're kind of going, ah! but remember this is gonna dry a little bit lighter. And I need this fence to be dark. It's, it's my main my main subject here. So I'm just going to make it a little dark. I can leave some light spots around. Maybe there's there's holes in it, or or the sun's just hitting it a little bit. Make up stories. That's what I tell my students. Make up stories. If anybody goes, why is it like that? Well, just make up a story. It's the way you want it. Come and just bring that down. I'm not going to do, do all of this so that I have some time. I want to get this finished. But I do need it to be a little bit more done so that you can understand what I'm doing. Now in, in most artwork you have the same kind of techniques and stuff throughout. It's just learning how to how to apply those those same techniques and create different things. Come up here, kind of straighten that out a little bit. When I get down at the base of this fence, I go around things to create the idea that there's leaves and weeds and stuff down there. So I'm just going to do like a little bit more and I'll, I'll, I'll finish that off, off camera. You know, but this is all I'm going to be doing is coming in and, and putting on another layer of shadow because this side of the fence is in shadow. And then I'll put a little bit of detail. There, there is a video on how to do some, some old boards. You might want to check that out. It's just a, a quick study, about 40 minutes worth. I like to do old things like old wood and old 
and like old cars and rusted things. Much more fun than the nice pristine looking stuff. Okay, so I'm going to kind of let that dry. I'll finish the rest of this. Oh, actually, I think I want to do a little bit over here because remember, I've got these two, two posts here that are in the sunlight. I'll just kind of do this. I still like, the, there are some other things that I'm going to do with some of these to, to create a little more depth. Remixing just the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, a little water. Doesn't have to be the same. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some more things over here to separate out, but layers. I have to do layers. I can't just just go straight to the final product. I have to have to do layers. There's a fence that kind of leans back there, and then here the the shadows have to follow the direction of the way the the shadow is being cast from this fence post there. So that's what these are. These are just shadows that are being cast. Okay, so I'll leave that. Now I want to come back in and I want to kind of clean up the top edges, which means I'm going to have to get a similar color to what's behind it. And that's going to be the red and orange that I did before and a little um, burnt sienna. I'm just mixing that over here. And I, it, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to come in and just kind of suggest these, these plants. Be a little more precise going around the edge because I don't have that masking fluid on, but the masking fluid is kind of a imperfect thing, so you have to kind of clean up, clean up the edges on it. But while you're doing that, just just make some more stuff, make some more some more leaves. Remember, leave some of what was there before because that becomes a texture. I get quiet when I have to have to concentrate. There is also some some green areas there. I'm gonna pick up. I've got some yellow green on my palette, which is just like a sap green with a little yellow in it. I'm gonna tap that in there. Oops, I, I was over here, so got to look at my monitor, make sure you can, guys can see what I'm doing. So this area, I just tapped a little bit of, of color in there. Same here. Just cleaning up the edges. Over here, there's some gray. So, so I'm just mixing just a little bit of... Um, Burnt sienna into a I'll bring it over here. A little bit of burnt sienna into a corner of that purple that I had made. Just to give it a little bit of change of color. So I can come here and just kind of clean up that edge. Remember, wherever you've got um, a light area, you've got to have some dark around it. So I'm just kind of coming in and adding some some dark around the edges of some of these fence posts just to clean them up. 
give a little bit of darkness to the background so that the light will show over here on these two fence posts here I want to get a little bit more um, dark but I, that's dirt so I'm just going to add some burnt sienna to the red and orange I just mixed up and just come here and just just add some add some color clean up the edge of that fence post Remember, this is coming down a hill, so I'll just kind of bring some of that up in through the, the weeds. This is just water on my brush now. I'm going to take a little bit more paint. Clean that edge up just ever so slightly. But notice now you can see the See the boards there. Okay, I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish this up uh, and then we'll get started on the, the final, final detail of this. I'll be right back. All right, so, well, let's get this finished up. Now I've done a little bit more. You're probably going, what did she do? Well, all I did, I wanted to get this finished enough so that when you get done with these videos then you can kind of finish it up on your own. I've just done a little bit of work down here. I've done a little bit of work on the fence because like I said you don't need to see it all because a lot of this is repetitive. But I've cleaned up the edges of my my fence here. I've done some work down here. I'll show you here in a second. Um, but now, now we start finishing this up. Now the fence here, we're going to do what's called dry brush. And if you haven't done dry brush before, it's really dry brush. You take and you rinse out your, your brush and you take it and then you dry it really well. Oh, I don't want that one, but that work, would work too. Get the smaller one, but I dry it and so that it's, it's really pretty dry. And then I've mixed up a color, which is the same ultramarine blue, um, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of, of burnt sienna. And I'm going to pick up some paint. And if it's a little bit dry, that's okay. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I don't want a lot of paint or a lot of water on the brush. Right now I'm just going to take the very edge of this brush, this nice sharp edge, and I can define the edges of some of these boards here. Right, just by tapping the very end of this and, and creating some, some lines in here. Just kind of create the edge there where boards are kind of shifted around. Maybe they've kind of split, but I'm just using the very edge and just creating a line. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. That's where a lot of you get, get stuck. You want to get out your rulers and everything. This is an old broken down fence. It's, it's really kind of in sad shape. So make, make the top of this like a little bit of a split there come down and I'm just kind of tapping. If you look at old wood right at the top it'll kind of split down and then you'll see I'm just reloading my brush. It's already dry so I didn't rinse it or anything just reloading it with some paint and just gonna gonna tap. But the edges you know where it's been cut usually have a, a lot more damage to it. You can come down, make some bigger ones. You can even, just picking up a little more, make make a, a, a hole, like maybe it was a knot hole or something. And then reloading my brush. Then you can take and 
just kind of split it so that the hairs are kind of split in your brush and then just lightly when I say lightly I mean very very lightly just skim the surface reloading splitting those and that'll create the, the smaller cracks and texture Pick up a little more. This is kind of a, it's tricky. And pressure is a, is a lot. If I, if I press really hard, I'm going to get a lot of paint out. I don't want that. I want, want just a little paint. So pressure on your brush is very important. Again, I'm not going to, finish this on camera, I'll finish it off camera and at the end you'll see, well, and also at the beginning you'll see the finished product. But now I've got these, these are the, the, the um, I'll move that over just a skosh. These are those, those bright ones that are in the sunshine. I'm going to do the same thing with the same color. Just loading up my brush with paint. And it really, when it's dry like this, it doesn't pick up a lot of paint. And I'm just going to spread those out and then just, just lightly come in and just skim that all the way down. Skim those. Come up. And do the same thing, put in some deeper, some deeper cuts. Brush was getting a little too dry, so I rinsed it a little bit. I'm just picking up some more. Just gonna tap the edges of it just to define those edges just a little bit. Give it a little more shape to those boards and then I'll, I'll just come in when I'm off camera and I'll just finish doing the detail this is where you know I could probably take another hour or more to, to work on detail on this so I'm, I, I really don't want to do that much on camera, but I do want to give you enough information that if that's what you want to do, you can do it. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and, and finish up the this down here. Now I've got three things going. I've got a light yellow green. This is just basically straight hooker's green right here. And then down here is hooker's green and a little bit of ultramarine blue. This is either hooker's or sap green, either one. A little bit of yellow. And, and this will probably drive some of you nuts because it's, it's so imprecise. But I'm just going to come in here and, and just kind of scumble this around. It's dots and little little U shapes. Come in, make, pick up some of the the hooker's green. Overlap and just just this is weeds. These are leaves that are down in here. I'll do the same thing. I've got the that reddish color, same thing here, just add those. Just brighten up. Don't lose all of your lighter colors. Those lighter colors are now highlights on these things. Pick up a little bit of that, that blue-green. Come down here. This is in the foreground. I may want to make this a little bit darker just down in the foreground to focus your attention. 
but I go back and forth. I've got all those greens. Just, this is the hooker's green. Come up the yellow green. I'll just like the fence, I'll finish this off camera. And you can look at the finish. There's also a finished um, version of this on on one of the the picture pages. So uh, you can go and, and see what this looks like when it's when it's finished. But the last thing I want to do is probably going to be the the scariest thing. Okay, we've got we've got shadows down in here and we've got a shadow from the fence here. And when I do this, people just kind of go because it's scary. The first time you do it, you just almost have to bite your lip and just go for it. I'm going to take that that same color I was using up on the fence, add a little more blue and a little more alizarin crimson, get kind of a, a purpley color. This is my shadow color. This is what I've done before. And now I'm going to come and I'm just going to kind of come over this, just hold my breath, kind of paint around some of the where I want the leaves. I'm looking at my reference material. Leave some of the light. There's a little bit of a, a fence shadow in here. Shadows are important. It, it kind of sets the thing, gives the direction of light. So don't be afraid to come in and do this. When it dries, it'll look a lot, a lot different. And then here, this is just a, kind of a, a darkness in the, you know, like a little dip in the, in the things. I'm going around, leaving some of that. And last but not least, I kind of want to show you something that you can do is just take a, a, an old mat and lay it on there. Call them magic mats because they show you that really what you've done, let me zoom out, what you've done doesn't look half bad. So thank you for watching. Make sure that you go and visit your family or, or talk to your family and friends. And most of all, keep painting, and I'll see you again in class real soon. Thank you for watching.